Hey, pretty little liars and Dominican friars. Speaking of friars, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Hello, everyone. My name is John, and welcome to the show, Christians You Should Know. On this here program, we will profile a famous or influential believer that you may or may not have heard of, but we should all probably know a little more about. These are the men and women who have laid the foundation for much of what we believe today. Obviously, this is just a test of this show, so I'm gonna try out a few different taglines, if you don't mind. Where we profile some prolific pupils. Where we dive into some dope disciples. I hate myself. Anyway, today, we are gonna be talking about the famous Thomas Aquinas. Hey, I've heard of him. Yeah, that's what I said. You've probably heard of him, but you don't know much about him specifically, so we're gonna learn a little bit more about him today. That's the whole point of this. Thomas Aquinas, in his time, was a Dominican friar and doctor of the church, which is a special ranking given by the Catholic Church to its most prolific leaders and theologians. But let's roll it back a little bit. Let's go back to the beginning. Before he was Thomas Aquinas, and he was just Lil Tommy. Little Tommy Aquini was born in the 13th century to a well-off noble Italian family. Many of Thomas's brothers were destined for a career in the military, but as the youngest sibling, Thomas's career path pointed towards the church. His uncle was the abbot or leader of a Benedictine monastery. And so at the very early age of five, Thomas was sent there for his schooling. However, due to some political unrest and military conflict at the time, Thomas was forced to move his education to the University of Naples around the age of 13. It was there that Thomas's love for theology began to marry with a newfound love of philosophy, a combination that would later define his entire ministry. But we'll get to that in a bit. Now back to Tommy. Toward the end of his study in Naples, Thomas made the decision to join the newer, more contemporary Dominican order of priests, rather than his family's Benedictine order. Thomas found himself attracted to the Dominican order's emphasis on spiritual service within society, as opposed to the more traditional, set-apart lifestyle of the Benedictines. Thomas's family, however, was not very pleased with this decision. Yeah. That's an understatement. In fact, they were so angry that he would betray his family's principles that they actually kidnapped their son and kept him locked in their own dungeons for nearly a year to try and get him to change his mind. That's like 13th century grounded to the max. Tommy, go to your room! Or the dungeons. Despite all of their best efforts, Thomas would not forsake the specific calling that he felt God had placed on his life. And later on, he was able to escape and rejoin his Dominican brothers. But the hard times didn't stop there for old Tommy. Earlier in this video, we touched on Aquinas' love for both theological and philosophical thought. During his schooling, Thomas was attracted to the teachings of Aristotle, and he began to believe that some of the reason and logic of philosophy could be used as a basis for defending and understanding Christian theology. And so through this study, Thomas Aquinas became a huge proponent of what is called natural theology. Natural theology provides arguments for the existence of God based on reason and logic, rather than revealing theology, which provides its arguments based on scriptural analysis and religious experience. During a medieval era where it was traditionally believed that faith and reason were in direct opposition, Thomas Aquinas believed that they both could work in collaboration, because both kinds of knowledge come from God himself. Thomas believed that revelation, or faith, could guide our reason, keeping us from making mistakes, while reason could provide clarity and help to demystify faith. Obviously, you can see how this type of thinking could be really controversial. I mean, it would be controversial today. And many prominent church leaders of the time made it their mission to discredit Thomas's work. And while I certainly don't agree with absolutely everything Thomas Aquinas ever said, the goal of engaging a secular culture through a lens of faith is a noble and relevant one. So what does Thomas Aquinas's life mean for us 
today, other than his obvious fashion sense. First off, Aquinas' progressive assertion that faith and reason could work together in proving the existence of God provided much of the basis for modern day apologetics. Back in the day, it would have been Tommy Aquini versus Bill Nye the Science Guy. And secondly, I think we can all be encouraged by the resolve with which Thomas Aquinas clung to his faith. Whether it was in the face of immense criticism from prominent church leaders, or being thrown into prison by his own family, aka 13th century grounded, Thomas Aquinas sought first and foremost to serve God by using the gifts that he had been given. And whether you agree with his philosophy or not, that is a mission and that is a life that we can all aspire to. Hey friends, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. We are at the end of January, which means we are at the end of our little experiment. So now comes the time. You have watched, hopefully, all of these brand new types of videos, and now it is time to vote. But before you do, before you go down in the description and click that link and vote, Let's do a little bit of a recap. First, we had testimony. God is going to get you where he wants you to go, sometimes against your best efforts. And at some point, again, hopefully earlier than I did, you're gonna have to just put aside your reservations or your fears or your stubbornness or your anxiety. You're gonna have to put all that aside and you're just gonna have to say, okay, God, I surrender. Then we had the Inspiration Club. Something that I believe is that nothing inspires excellence more than excellence. What I mean by that is when I go and see other people do what they do at the highest possible level, whether it be filmmaking or writing or preaching or calf roping, whatever, it inspires me to reach for higher levels in what I do. Last week, we looked at a show called Lens of Faith. Obviously, when someone abuses someone else, the abuser's actions are not at all above reproach. However, when you seek to hide the sins and crimes of fellow church leaders, you are no longer living above reproach either. And finally, today, we had Christians You Should Know. If you haven't watched one of those previous videos, please go back now and watch it, and then go and click the link in the description below to cast your vote. Which of these four shows do you want to see added to our regular Friday lineup? I really need your feedback here, because I am very excited about this. That is all I have for you. Don't forget, please go cast your vote. I love you all. Keep being awesome.